What's up, crypto gang? Welcome back to another episode. If you guys are new here, we do a giveaway at the beginning of every single episode, and today's winner is Earn Online Nepal. Thanks so much for liking and commenting on the previous video. You guys wanna win on the next video? Like, comment with your wallet address, and don't forget to subscribe. On today's episode, I wanted to talk just briefly about Bitcoin scaling. I get a lot of questions about Lightning and Plasma for Ethereum and different side chains that have to do with scaling the networks. I like to describe scaling is there are a lot of people trying to fit into these small blocks on Bitcoin. So a lot of brilliant engineers came up with different methods to simplify and speed up the transactions. The one I wanted to talk about today is Lightning, and I covered it with Hishoshi in a previous episode because he was an Ethereum developer and we actually talked about Plasma and a couple of other side chains, but I like to break this down into a very, very simple way when I'm describing it to people as well as for myself when I'm thinking about side chains. And when I think of gold to the US dollar, I think of Bitcoin to Lightning and side chains. At the time of filming this video, Lightning payment channels are worth a little bit over $1.3 million, which means that the graph has just gone absolutely up and to the right as far as the increase in value and the increase in usage. The channel, just like Hashoshi and I covered in the past for payments, would be if I went into a coffee shop, I would set up a Lightning payment channel with them and I would just transact with them seamlessly, never touching the blockchain of Bitcoin directly. I would just be transacting back and forth. And when it was time to settle up, we would touch the Bitcoin blockchain. So we could do a bunch of transactions and it would never actually have to touch the Bitcoin blockchain itself and slow things down and just be kind of bogged down by all the other transactions. It's seamlessly going back and forth together. I'd be making my payments for coffee every day. And then at the end we would settle up and then it would get the transaction from the Bitcoin blockchain. As I said before, when you have something like gold backing the dollar, we transact in dollars all day. And for example, we could go and we could buy some gold with those dollars. But these two types of commodities being backed by like a side chain and fiat currency, those are the relations that I like to think about when I'm thinking about different types of side chains. There's a lot of other things around scaling like sharding that I don't really wanna go into too much, but basically instead of downloading the entire blockchain, which takes like a week onto your laptop when you're using Ethereum, you can use this new sharding concept that they're coming up with where it'll fragment out the ledger across all the different nodes and it doesn't necessarily slow things down. Also, one last piece that I wanted to leave you guys with was the way that I've been thinking a lot about Bitcoin and the questions that I've been getting about it are around the store value concept. So people have said, oh yeah, Bitcoin failed as a payment network. And the reality of that is virtually true. But in the same way, uh, a store of value is more valuable than a payment network itself. So when you look at things like Visa, MasterCard, and then you look at gold, all those credit networks and all those payment networks, Visa, MasterCard, Chase, all those companies that focus on payments are only altogether a small little percentage of what the value of gold is, which is a store of value. So when everybody's saying, oh man, it's failed as a payment network, that's actually a good thing. When you're thinking about the long-term value, when it's a store of value in the future as potentially a global reserve currency, that is exponentially more valuable than just a payment network. They would compete with a Visa or a MasterCard. So whenever you hear people talking about that it's failed as a payment network, you can definitely say, okay, well, it is actually more valuable if it is a store of value and if it can accomplish that, we are on our way to a million dollar Bitcoin. That's it for this episode. I hope that I helped describe a little bit more about Bitcoin scaling when you're thinking of fiat currency to gold, as far as side chains to Bitcoin. And also I hope that this helped kind of describe why a store of value is way more valuable than a payment network that people keep talking about with Bitcoin. So if you guys like this video, slap a like. If you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you on the next episode of Hack Crypto.